I attempted to um, like um, a lot of black people in um, America and um, a lot of black people that didn't uh, just kind of join the club, so to speak, um, and just kind of go along with what anything that the Obama administration kind of put out simply because there was this overall feeling about Obama um, in the black neighborhood as though he's the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. And um, we know that's not true. So whether it's Obamacare, gun control, abortion, um, the bailouts, or whatever it, um, it was pertaining to, a lot of people just went along with it without looking into it. And I think that's the first mistake that we make simply because we need to look at the, uh, the agenda as opposed to the individual. There's a beautiful picture that depicts the bird of freedom, the eagle, which represents America flying high and soaring over um, all the other uh, lands and governments and systems that are set up. Um, why do they use the phoenix or why do they use the eagle? Simply because the eagle flies the highest. Um, that particular science was stolen from ancient Kemet, but nonetheless, uh, the Democrat and Republican Party are two wings of the same damn bird. So when we get into this particular discussion about Democrats wanting this and controlling that, I mean, Republicans not agreeing to this and controlling the House and this kind of thing, we have to understand something that it's the same people that control both parties. So when we talk about the Hegelian dialectic principle, of course, you have the Reds, the Republican Party, and the Blues, which is the Democratic Party, and no one even uh, talks above a whisper when it talks about uh, interjecting and, and, and creating a third party which can balance out the two. Those both, those, both of those particular parties are controlled by the same people. And if you do not understand anything about this particular talk today, understand that. The same people control both parties. And we need to understand that from that, this point moving, moving forward. So when you talk about false flags, you're talking about them creating incidents, as we've seen recently um, in Boston, which we can't expound on, which we've seen in London, which we've seen in um, New York and, and other places on the globe where they want you to think that these particular things um, are going on so they can push a certain bill or they can push, they can take away certain um, rights from the people. Um, and I think a lot of times these bills are signed uh, based on hype, hysteria, mass hysteria, um, uh, created and put out there and fostered by the same people that are trying to take the rights away. So when you're talking about an incident going down, we have to look not only at the incident, but what's going on behind the incident and what bill are they trying to pass? What, what particular law that they're trying to sign in? And then what rights are at stake that they're taking and continue to take from the American people? Well, you know something, I think a lot of people have called me and asked me about sovereignty and the way I um, understand it, um, I only, only kind of answer that question as it relates to um, the whole 30 to 60 million of us becoming a sovereign country with inside of America unless some African government is going to cough up some land. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? You as an individual becoming sovereign and, and, and fighting these people downtown and filing some, filing some paperwork with the same people that got you in this situation in the first place is ridiculous. Ask the Native American how many how many times he filed some paperwork downtown with the treaties that he signed with these people? It ain't gonna happen. If they were already living on land that they owned, right? Mm -hmm. Then what happened? I thought they were already sovereign. I'm talking about the treaties that the Native Americans, all of the 200 tribes, mm -hmm. the treaties that they signed with, uh, with this government, were they respected? Of course not. Okay, then what makes you think yours is going to be respected downtown? Obama's not setting aside a certain particular uh, set aside uh, for, for black people in reference to Obamacare. It's going to affect all of us. And some of the same ones with the lip service are the same ones that claim themselves to be good, uh, uh, red-blooded Americans. 
And, and, and this particular, this thing is sad. So what I did for you, specifically for you, is I pulled up all of the things that Barack Obama promised that he never kept. And this is not a document coming from Professor Griff. We'll, we'll talk about who it comes from in a minute. Did Barack H. Obama deliver on his promises? Broken promise number one, sunlight before signing, which we talked about earlier. When Obama campaigned for the Democratic presidential nomination in Manchester, New Hampshire, on June 22, 2007, he announced his sunlight before signing promise. When there is a bill that ends up on my desk as the, pres uh, as the president, you, the public, will have five days to look online and find out what's in it before I sign it, he said. Now, let's look into some of the bills that he has passed. Did you, as red-blooded Americans, get to look at NDAA? Come on, man. I'm laughing inside while I'm saying this because you sound like a hypocritical idiot. You want to come at Professor Griff, all right, you want to blast Alec Jones and, and other people. You want to you confront the info warriors and the infomaniacs. But we know what we talk about because we have documented proof. That's the first promise that he broke. So you talk to me about stop and frisk and what that madness is about. Talk to me about homeland security. Talk to me about the TSA and what's going to go down at all of the airports. Talk to me. Anyway, too often bills are rushed through Congress and, and to the president before the public has the opportunity to, to review them. As president, as president, Obama will not sign any non-emergency bill without giving the American public an opportunity to review and comment on the White, on, on the White House website for five days. What five days did I get to look at NDAA? Come on, talk to me. I don't hear nobody talking. <laughs> but anyway, broken promise number two, capital gain tax elimination. According to the comprehensive tan, uh, tax plan released during his campaign, uh, Obama promised to eliminate capital gains taxes for small businesses. I have a small business, which is taxed to the, to the hilt. You have small businesses that we can barely keep. Uh, simply because multinational corporations are given set-asides and tax-free this and tax-free that and loopholes in the way out. Not you, the small businessman. So when we talk about gun control and controlling guns, and then we, we mention Walmart, and Walmart is brought into uh, the conversations, all of a sudden we have to talk about these set-asides and someone that's there on the hill representing Walmart. Who is on the Hill talking and, uh, and speaking for you, the small businessman and woman? Nobody. Broken promise number three, new American job tax credit. Come on, need, need, need I talk about that? I can't afford to be taxed um, $3,000 a year as a small businessman. I'm the one that needs to set aside in the loopholes. I'm the one that needs someone on the Hill um, speaking in reference in, in, in my behalf. You understand what I'm saying? If a company that currently has 10 U.S. employees increases uh, its domestic uh, full-time employment to 20 employees, this company would get a $3,000 tax credit. Well, I can't afford 20 employees. Obama's, Obama's promise was never, was never included in the stimulus package. Broken promise number four, hiatus on hiatus on the 401k penalties. Many unemployed and financially strapped Americans have considered early withdrawals on 401k and retirement accounts to survive the current uh, recession. You see how you're being squeezed? You're being wrung the f out and hung to dry because you're having to tap in to the savings that you've saved all your life and the hard work that you've put in um, working from sun up to sundown. Can't see morning to can't see evening. You go to work, it's dark. You come home from work, it's dark. You're working to the bone, man, to now having to tap into your 401k and your retirement and your savings just to survive the recession? 
Come on, man. All of the broken promises, man. I don't wanna, listen, I don't want to go out on, on, on a date with America and you promising something at the end of the night that you know I'm not going to get. Stroking my ego and stroking a few other things. Are you following me? If you're not going to come across and you're not going to come through, then don't make me the promise. And he's promised a whole lot of things to black America. And I'm telling you, man, take, man go take these damn cameras to the hood and interview the average black person on the street about Barack Obama. And they'll say Barack Obama's made a whole bunch of promises that he's not going to keep. You got some of that. Yesterday when we was in the car, I was getting unscrupulous phone calls from men and women. And they, they said they don't buy into the Barack Obama hype. Pitchy, 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 pitchy. Don't believe the hype. Anyway, broken promise number five. No jobs for the lobbyists. All these people that get together and create these lobbies. And they go and they put their, 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 their monies um, and their resources and their energy behind a particular candidate and a particular bill. These people have invested interests. But why are they the ones getting the jobs? You don't have the job. The little piece of job that you got to string together, uh, two or three part-time jobs that you have to work to string together a meager existence in America, pl please, man. Please, where's Barack Obama taking us? Straight to hell. And you're going to be on the way to hell. You're going to be hungry going there because you don't have enough money um, in reference to your paycheck to put together enough money uh, to feed your family. Let me tell you something. There's more black people in America than there are some countries. <laughs> so what's wrong with us being sovereign? See, we have to take the responsibility of, of uh, carving out our own destiny. Then and only then, I think, will this government respect us. Do you remember the, um, the Occupy movement? <clears throat> we was preparing food and coming up with a way to put together certain monies um, so certain businesses can, without naming them, would donate food so we could put together uh, info warriors to go out and infomaniacs to go out to take the food to the Occupy movement. Even though I'm not really 1,000% behind that, you're holding up a placard and you're speaking and yelling at empty buildings, okay, fine. But if that's your way of protest, do your thing. But did I give my efforts behind it to help orchestrate some people to come and take money and get monies and food from, from, the, from businesses that do support you in private, but they can't, you know, do it in public to feed you? Yeah, of course I did. Because I may not be the one on the front line in reference to occupying a certain city, but nonetheless, I applaud your effort. But my point is this. Some of the occupiers were out there hungry. Because they don't have jobs. Hell, occupying 24-7 or eight-hour shift, they didn't get paid for that. We need to understand this is very, very real. Earmark reform. Hell, we could talk about that all day. Broken promise number seven, bring troops home um, in 16 months. What month is this? <laughs> and they're just now talking about bringing them home. Although we're hearing the little rumbling of bags being packed in Afghanistan, nonetheless, you know, the average Latino brother, Native American, the average black brother, the poor white, I don't see them coming home. No time soon. No time soon. However, in February, February 27, uh, Ob Obama declared, let me say this as plainly as I can. By August, thir August 31, 2010, our combat mission in Iraq will end. Thank you. Precisely. See, silence is golden. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uh, as we close, broken promise number nine, $4,000 college credit. Who got that? Tay Tay, Ri Ri, Man Man, and, 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 and Twan and them that's struggling, begging for money for their, their, their parents every, every month, quarterly. They, they never got that. $4,000 on, on a card, a debit card, 
that will run out at the end of $4,000 to a college student is like heaven. You mean to tell me I get a chance to eat today? A college student would be in heaven, man. Obama pledged to make college affordable for all Americans. Isn't that what Muammar Gaddafi did? Free education, free health care. But we don't even get that under the Obama administration. But you murder and assassinate uh, Muammar Gaddafi, who provided that for every uh, citizen in Libya. Um, Barack Obama pledged to make college affordable for all Americans. When announced his American uh, Opportunity Tax Credit, um, his campaign promise read, the universal and fully uh, refundable credit will ensure that the first $4,000 of a, of a college education is completely free uh, for, the most, for most Americans and will cover two-thirds of the cost of tuition for the average public college and university and make community college tuition completely free for most students. Recipients of the credit will be required to conduct 100 hours of community service. Is that a deal or is that a shakedown? So as long as you put in 100 community hours of community service, all right, and you're a citizen and, you, and we can check you off on the list and you meet the requirements, then and only then will you get the 4000 Dollar credit. Broken promise uh, number 10, transparency. Can I close my iPad on that one? Government is not transparent, man. There's so many wicked things going on in the government that, hell, we can't even tell you. And this is the damn documentary film. So I have in front of me uh, <clears throat> a document by Wayne Madsen. <clears throat> And it talks about the manufacturing of a president, the CIA's insertion of Barack H. Obama Jr. into the White House. From that particular document, um, I started looking behind this particular document at all the president's men. I looked into the uh, birth certificate. I looked into Barack Obama Sr. I looked into his um, involvement were being um, maneuvered and controlled by the CIA. Um, we looked into his mom, the bloodline, the lineage. We could talk about all of that. But we want to talk about all of the president's men. And I want to talk about three men that I mentioned in my book, The Psychological Covert War on Hip Hop, The Illuminati's Takeover of Hip Hop. In the 10th chapter, I talked about Common, who was invited to the White House. I talked about Ludacris, who wrote a song for Barack Obama, who was invited to the White House. I talked about Jay-Z, who signed off on gay marriage and endorsed it, who was invited to the White House. I talked about um, Will I Am, who wrote a song, Yes We Can, who was invited to the White House. And we all know Yes We Can backwards is Thank You Satan. Um, we could talk about a few other people that was invited to the White House. But why is hip hop in bed with Barack Obama, who is in bed with the global elite, who is in bed with the banksters, who is in bed with the neocons? We have to understand this particular dynamic so it runs deep. It affects art and culture, entertainment. Although you just think it's, a, it's an opportunity to be in the White House because it looks good on your discography, you don't even understand what you're doing and who, are, who you are aligning yourself with and what agenda and you, that you're carrying it out unknowingly. So when we talk about the Illuminati takeover of hip-hop, we talk about Jay-Z. And a lot of people say, well, Jay-Z is, is, is the Illuminati. Well, no, he's not. He's carrying out the uh, Luciferian uh, demonic agenda of the Illuminati. And then we say, well, what's Barack Obama's uh, affiliation and association with the Illuminists and the Illuminati? You have to understand something. These same people may control AOL, Yahoo, Google. So we have to look beyond and past a, a Google search. We have to cross-reference. We have to connect the dots. We have to go out on the streets and get uh, and have conversations with the average person. So let's look at uh, all of the president's men. Those are just a few of them dealing with arts, culture, and entertainment. 
dealing with the Illuminati. Let's look at a few other ones. Uh, Adolfo Nicholas, who is the 30, uh, the 30th Superior General Society of, of uh, uh, Jesus, which they affectionately call him the Black Pope. No, not the Black Pope, but the Black Pope. Not the one that they come to the Vatican and kiss the ring. The one that's really running things, the Black Pope. Not the one that they parade in front of you. I'm talking about the Black Pope. Go do your research. George Soros, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, member of the Carlisle Group, multi-billionaire, major stockholder in Halliburton, Hungarian, uh, Hungarian ancestry, socialist, communist, financial uh, backer of Barack H. Obama, friend of Rupert Murdoch. All right? We need to understand these particular people and who they are and what role do they play in installing a president into the White House. Rupert Murdoch, a member of Council on Foreign Relations, a member um, of the Knights, uh, Knights of St. Gregory, an international media mogul, owner of Fox News, a uh, friend of George Soros. Uh, a cult, listen now, here's the line, I don't want you this to get past you or by you. An occult protector of Barack Hussein Obama. You didn't hear what I said. The term occult is not that bad. Occult means, simply means hidden. But when it comes to these people, they speak a language far beyond your comprehension because they talk in terms of black and white magic. And they talk, you use occultic, uh, linguistic kind of terms that you may not be privy to or you may not understand. For example, George Bush II, Jr., when he spoke for eight years, you barely understood anything George Bush Jr. said because he stumbled through his words. But the phrases and the phraseology and the way he pronounced certain words, put in certain phrases along with other phrases. Um, it's called doublespeak. <laughs> the term is called doublespeak. And you can do the research. Dig up um, uh, Stephen Jacobson, uh, Mind Control in America. Uh, Backwards masking and double speak. George Bush Jr. was good at this. So you could be listening to a speech and you could scratch your head at the end of 30 minutes and, or 90 minutes. You say, what the hell did he talk about? But he got his message over to the people that he was speaking to because he wasn't speaking to you. Joseph R. Biden. Who the f is this character? And where do they drag this character out of the woodworks? From Delaware. We don't even go to Delaware. Stop lying. You don't go to Delaware. You go right past Delaware on your way to Philly. <laughs> right or wrong. You don't even, there's nothing to stop in Delaware about or for. The credit card companies are there in Delaware, right or wrong. DuPont, DuPont and some of the other multinational corporations. You don't even stop in Delaware. You don't know one in Delaware. So they dragged this character out of Delaware. I don't I never heard of this character. But Joseph R. Biden, a papal knight, Jesuit temporal, this words I can't even pronounce because he belongs to this, this, this elite club, um, this elite club of, uh, that are controlled by the Jesuits. And we need to understand that this is one of the ones that are sitting next to Barack Obama to make sure Barack Obama carries out the agenda. The damn uh, vice president? The vice president of what? The presidency is a corporation, man. And we need to understand that Barack Obama sits as the president of a corporation, which are controlled by corporations. Joe Biden just sits as vice president of that same corporation. Promoter of the Council on Foreign Relations. His honorary degrees uh, uh, of the Jesuit, from the Jesuit University of Scranton in Scranton, Pennsylvania. That's another ungodly place. You been to Scranton? Thank you. Precisely my point. Precisely my point. You have no clue. Who the f*** even lives in Scranton? What the f*** do they do there? Anyway. Now, this may resonate with hip-hop artists, and I don't know if you can see this. Are they big pimping, or are they just popping collars? 
So we, we need to understand these particular dynamics. And who are these people that Barack Obama has to go and kiss the ring and answer to? So when it talks about uh, issues that affect the uh, American uh, people, I don't care if it's, it's preparedness, I don't care if it's stocking up food, um, Barack Obama is controlled, bought and paid for. So when you talk about gun control, the question here is, is it about guns or is it about control? <laughs> we need to understand that. So those are some of the president's men. Um, now, if we could just kind of have a fireside chat about, about some other things, we can kind of dive into some of these things that uh, Barack Obama uh, has to say and do to keep the agenda and the, uh, and the machine fueled, well-oiled. And we need to understand it because we already talked about the media. We talked about the corporations. We talked about all the president's men. We talked about Barack Obama's agenda and his influence dealing with hip-hop artists to deal with arts and culture because I'm telling you, the masses of the, of, of the people that have voted for Barack Obama uh, was, was, was uh, groomed well via MTV, BET, and some of the multinational corporations that influence entertainment, arts, and culture. And don't you ever damn think that MTV, VH1, and uh, all of the other alphabet boys are not in cahoots and in bed with Barack Obama and those that control the media to carry out the agenda. That's how they carry out the agenda, from unsuspecting masses of the people who carry out the agenda unknowingly. We need to understand that. I, I, know, I know a half a dozen people right now languishing in prison behind this sovereignty stuff. A friend of mine told me yesterday while we was walking, he said there's probably some dudes up in prison with a whole bunch of time on their hands figuring out this paperwork. How do we climb out of this proverbial bag that we in? Um, together, one mind, one spirit, one voice, one agenda, and if everyone is saying the exact same thing, they have no other choice. If Alex Jones is saying the same thing, Professor Griffin, Public Enemy is saying, um, you guys are saying the same thing, rappers are saying the same thing, politicians who are not afraid, who stand up and speak for uh, what they truly believe in, um, if you truly believe in the Second Amendment, then they have no other choice but to say, you know something, we have to sit and listen. And then we have to have someone in those offices, in the political arenas, that can actually speak for the masses of the people, both the black and white and every color in between. Do we have that? No, the sell out cowards that are there as politicians up on the Hill and in the White House, that they won't utter a word to speak for the masses of the people. So then I ask the question to you, what the is democracy about? I posed a question on the internet. Um, does democracy work? And if it does, show me on what part of the planet it works. If democracy works, then why does America kill our leaders? So the whole idea of this war on terrorism is spreading democracy. Get out of here. People in Libya don't want democracy. Unless the media, multi-ethnic destruction in America, forces it on the people. They want to convince you to believe that you believe that you want democracy in Libya. I'm trying to state some, some obvious facts that those that are watching this particular DVD, be it on YouTube, on smart ass phones for dumb ass, um, we're going to put it out there and just make it very transparent, very clear very plain, not to insult your intelligence, very elementary. Um, and if you have a problem with the black on my face, then just mute, uh, put a cover over the screen, <laughs> just turn the volume up so you can hear what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with it, so I'm sure you shouldn't. Truth is truth regardless. Are you following me? Can you imagine all of us in this room get caught in the spider web? And I'm the only one that the, ch the spider chooses to eat. <laughs> no, we all in this together. You understand what I'm saying? 
one of Wesley, uh, Wesley Snipes' movie, I uh, forget which one, which one it was, one of the characters said, you know, CMB, the Cash Money Brothers, we all we got. So y'all better get used to the idea. Um, we're going to have to lock arms and become and get in sync with those of us that just don't necessarily look like us. Get f***ing used to it. The war is on. You understand what I'm saying? So when I turn to uh, a brother of mine like Alex Jones without looking back, if I say, look, bro, pass the ammo, then pass the ammo. And you can't deny the fact that Alex Jones at Infowars.com, Prison Planet, or which, whatever entity it is, did he not pass the ammo? Yes, look at what we have here. Corporatism, a system of control designed by, uh, by the monopoly men of the global elite. Now, this wasn't written by Professor Griff. And it talks about um, 47 million Americans are now on food stamps in the middle class. It talks about how China, um, how um, China is in, in, uh, creating uh, these particular robots that are taking over the jobs, not in China, <laughs> in America. So we, we, when we go into uh, false flags, and we as we talked about earlier, we talked about we talk about the United States. The U.S., and there's a difference between the U.S. and the U.S.A. Google U.S. versus the U.S.A., and you call me and tell me what you come up with. Anyway, this document here says uh, U.S. and Al-Qaeda, which we know Al-Qaeda was something manufactured and made up by the CIA um, as the boogeyman. And there always has to be a boogeyman. With every president that sits in the, in the seat, there always has to be a boogeyman that they're fighting. Well, we need to figure out who's the boogeyman for Bar uh, Barack H. Obama. This says the best uh, frenemies. Al-Qaeda was created uh, by the CIA. And it's a 20-page a document, and it goes into how Barack Obama was groomed uh, by the CIA to do exactly what, uh, what he's doing. Now, if you see and you look real close, we're going to talk about the media in a minute. If you look real close at what George Bush Jr. set in motion um, in Eurasia and other places that Zbigniew Brzezinski talked about um, in his book, you don't see a dime worth a damn difference what George Bush Jr. said uh, in the eight years of him stumbling through his pregnant <laughs> pregnancy in the White House. <laughs> You don't see a, a damn bit of difference than what Barack Obama is, is doing today. As a matter of fact, it's, it's worse what Barack Obama is doing. Simply because some of those things that Barack Obama should have came into office and erased, eradicated, and undid what uh, George Bush Jr. set in motion what Barack Obama has, has done, I heard Dick Gregory say that um, if you see some of the tricks um, that the CIA are pulling across the global landscape, she, that going to make uh, Hitler blush. It's ridiculous. The mass murders that are going on to establish democracy in these places. And then when it comes to the media, listen. Don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about those sincere, real, hardworking photojournalists and journalists like you guys that are out there getting the real story and the story that's behind the scenes. But we rarely hear from you guys on a global scale, on a, on, 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 on a, a sound bite that's put on repeat on CNN every 10 minutes, that's playing through the air phones and on people's uh, airport and on people's phones. We rarely get that. We have to create websites, mirror websites, um, send out um, uh, information through the, uh, through the phones and through phone apps and this kind of thing to directly reach the people. Gun control. Um, we have to talk about the amendments. Now just, once again, I'm not playing the race card. When we talk about the Constitution or constipation of the United States of America, you have to understand it means something different 
to white Europeans as it means to black people. Um, oh, the reason why we call ourselves public enemy. <laughs> it's the whole idea of black people being written in as three-fifths of a human being. Now, what kind of bull is that? I mean, the tape is rolling, but we're just speaking, having a fireside chat right now. How in the hell can I respect the Constitution that wrote me in as subhuman? So then when we go look at the Constitution, we can honestly say that a pig, man, an animal is whole pig, five-fifths pig, um, a snake, a gerbil, a damn fly is a whole fly, a whole cow, a whole pig, five-fifths. But when it comes to black people that gave birth to everyone on the planet, and we can debate that, you write black people in as three-fifths of a human being, and then you want to try to amend it as though that's cool. That's like doing a puffy remix on the Constitution. F*** out of here. I'm not buying into it. So when we talk about rights, black people have no rights in America because we're not human. We're subhuman. So then when we stand up and speak to these particular things, we're speaking from a different perspective than white people. And we need to understand it. But the beautiful thing I like about what's going on, especially with what Alex Jones is doing is the fact that all of us are in the same boat. <laughs> so get used to it, white people. <laughs> you gotta start living like black people have been living. And I'm laughing about it simply because now the gender and the, uh, the race uh, lines have been blurred now to the point where we're forced to work together. Now you're forced to see it how we see it and we're forced to see it how you see it. Now what are we gonna do? Be ignorant and keep arguing over the race card and the race issue? No. We have to come together on some real issues that affect us all, regardless of your complexion. We, we have to understand it and, and, and understand it from uh, black people, my, my perspective, and heart, a heartfelt black point of reference. Because if I say I support the Second Amendment, then we move on to the third, fourth, fifth, then it becomes a problem. Because my is going to get caught in a web that wasn't designed for me to get the fuck out of. Okay, let's just be honest and let's talk. After all of it's said and done, we're sovereign, we're over the hill, we don't have to look back, that door's closed. Can I actually hook up with other people that's not my complexion and we could put something in place where all of us are sovereign and we can have arms and, and enjoy the rights and the freedoms that everyone else on the planet enjoys? You Right, who wouldn't want that? As a human, I would want that. Plain and simple. But we don't have that today in America, now do we? No. Listen, law is only as good as the people enforcing the law. Am I correct? So that if they're not going to um, support, protect, defend, honor, uh, uphold, the very same law that they put in place. What good is it? George Bush Sr. and Jr. on the Constitution. Am I right or wrong? And there's only a handful of people that spoke up. And the majority of them sold the fuck out and took the payoff. Plain and simple. And then the ones that did speak up, the brave white people that did speak up to speak to other white people, because I can't speak to the vast majority of white people. I can't do my songs through the public enemy um, uh, medium of hip hop and music, and a lot of young white people get it. But these old <laughs> who refuse to give up the whole idea of an, uh, black, having black people be inclusive and, and share the benefit of what the Second Amendment has to offer, <laughs> get out of here. It ain't gonna happen. Hidden histories of all the president's guns. April 1963, President and General Chester V. Clifton inspect M16 assault weapon. But then it goes down. I'm skipping down now. There's a picture here of, um, um, of President uh, John F. Kennedy. April of 1960, it says, by calling attention to a well-regulated militia, 
the security of the nation and the right of each citizen to keep and bear arms. Our founding fathers recognized uh, the essentially uh, civilian nature of our economy. Although it is extremely unlikely that the fears of the governmental um, tyranny which gave rise to the Second Amendment will ever be a major danger in our nation, go figure, right? <laughs> the amendment still remains an important decla uh, declaration of our basic civilian military relationships in which every citizen must be ready to participate in the defense of his country. For that reason, I believe that the Second Amendment will always be important. That's John F. Kennedy, April 1960. How important, how important is that particular quote in 2013 as we sit here and as we speak today? Every citizen, wait a minute, that includes all the illegal aliens that you claim are illegal in America, all right? That you, at, that, at the stroke of a pen, that Barack Obama can make all these people legal? Are you talking about the disenfranchised uh, segments of the black community um, that who are under this three-strike law have no rights anymore? Are you talking about convicted felons who have no voice? Who are you talking about that, that every, every citizen? Who do you consider a citizen? There's, there's rights being taken away right now as we speak. And according to the particular laws that they're passing, you have no voice because they don't consider you uh, a citizen. We need to understand it. So when you're looking at the hidden histories of all presidents and their guns, just for example, this gold-plated AR-15 presented to President Kennedy by the Colt Firearms back in the day. This is an actual gold-plated, uh, this is a gold-plated gun that was presented um, to President Kennedy. Down here, uh, there was a gold-plated, uh, from the Colt uh, factory, a gold-plated handgun that was uh, presented to Wilson at the particular time. So you mean to tell me that the gun manufacturers are not in bed with some of these people um, in the White House? Come on, we can go through a history of people owning guns. Here's Elvis presenting Nixon with a gun. But this is not, this is not the important thing. We need to talk about the guns that are on the street, that was put on the street when you go through operations like Operation Garden Plot. When you talk about the CIA covert operation um, in, black America, in black America, just in America, period, we can do a history of CIA covert operations um, in America. Um, and how many guns are on the street and been put on the street by the government uh, herself. And then we can take account of that and then we can say to ourselves, okay, well who the hell put the guns on the street in the first place? So when you talk about the second, when you talk about the second amendment and who actually has rights, let me tell you something. There's people that own guns right now that will never have rights in America but they're using them every single day. And I swear, and y'all just chime in on this. You mean to tell me we looked at what happened in Boston for the last week? They admitted several times, and I don't know if you guys are listening, but they went door to door, black boots kicking doors in, man. That's what's to come. That's what's happening right now as we speak. They're gonna kick your door in like they're gonna kick mine in. People that control the media could probably fit right in this room with snacks right or wrong. <laughs> you're not talking about, you're talking about gigantic corporations, but you're talking about a handful of people that control everything that we see, everything that we hear, everything that we touch. And I don't care if it's a movie that comes out, a magazine, a trend, they control it all. You probably have Zero 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 point one percent of uh, information that gets out through brave souls and individuals um, uh, that control their own uh, websites uh, and, and news sources and can extract information and news from around the globe that can effectively reach the masses 
not the masses, but those select few of the people that's, that want to hear it. it. It never reaches the masses. But let's look at it like this here. The information that some of the brave souls that are out there that are, are reaching uh, the people, uh, it's growing. Look at it like this. We here. And if it wasn't for the Alex Joneses of the world and uh, the uh, info, info warriors and the info maniacs of the world, we wouldn't be sitting in the same room. Man. Because we have something way beyond the complexion of our skin. We have, we have uh, like-mindedness and we're coming together on, on, a, on an agenda that we understand that will not only affect your children's children's children, but will affect mine. That's what brings me here today to talk about these very critical issues simply because I cannot as a man, a responsible uh, man, sit here and say that I'm good, it's cool and fine with me, that, and, and then I agree and go along with everything that's going on in the government. No, I have to use the public enemy platform and I have to use hip hop and the platform um, that I've been allowed to use to raise my voice to speak against these particular ills that will affect not only my children, but yours. Plain and simple. And, and the sad part about it, I don't even know your children. But we're like-minded, and I, and I feel your pain. But I'm speaking out about it, and so should you. Wherever you're sitting watching this. But we are not going to allow you to play armchair revolutionary. And sit in, in your living room in, in, in the comforts of your own home in front of your 60 inch screen TVs and think that everything's gonna be all right while your ass is ordering pizza. It's not gonna be all right until you raise your voice and speak against the madness that's going on in the government. We're doing it. We're putting together the documents, we're putting together the websites and the, and the information. And info warriors are going out spreading the truth, regardless whether it's on the front line, on and off. The internet, on and offline, sitting back, pretending like it's somebody else's duty and responsibility to, to take care of us. We had a conversation yesterday when I was listening to you guys talk about the whole idea of food. And we all know that they're going to use food as a weapon because they're already using food as a weapon. So for those Americans, Americans that are sitting back watching this, thinking that you're going to leave it up to somebody else uh, to take care of your basic needs, you better think twice. The government has no intentions on looking out for the masses of people, black, brown, red, yellow, or white, plain and simple. It's a handful of people that's going to look out for the handful of people. And guess what? You ain't part of the club, man. I think, didn't George Carlin say that? You're not part of the club, plain and simple. Uh, you don't have the card, you don't know the handshake, you don't know the code word, and you need to kind of get used to that. Some of you flunkies are, uh, in some of these organizations thinking that because you are allowed to sit next to a couple of Congress people and some politicians up at a $100 a plate dinner, you think you're in. You're not in. They're not even going to allow you to clean the floor after the dinner, and you need to understand that. Um... And I'm especially talking to some of these Negroes that are out there that think that everything's just going to be all right. The government is going to take care of, of feeding your children. Um, what's the estimate of how many people are on welfare now? It's 47 million? Close to 50 million. That's a lot of people to feed. There's a lot of people, a lot of people to feed, especially when there's... Uh, 196,940,000 square miles of the planet. Everyone can eat well, <laughs> but it, it's not about that. It's the haves, the have-nots. And they're going to they're gonna hire mercenaries like Blackwater and other, and other militia and organizations to come in and do their dirty work. You know why? Because they don't want their hands dripping with blood. So we have to understand these particular dynamics, man. And... Excuse me for speaking this way, but this is just what it is. This is just what it is. man. You're not he hearing the ranting of an angry black man. Um, if you resonate with what I'm saying, hell, these documents weren't written by Professor Griff or Chuck D in Public Enemy. These, these, are, these are documents written by concerned white people. <laughs> 
You understand what I'm saying? That uh, or the voice of the voiceless. But we have a voice today. Uh, not doing a commercial for Alex Jones or his crew, but we have voices today that are not afraid to speak up and speak out. Bob Marley said, uh, stand up for your rights because these people that you have voted in to office are not going to speak up for you. So, 15 deadly corporations. Should we mention them? But these are the ones that put millions, if not billions of dollars uh, uh, into a campaign. And then, after we talk about these 15 corporations, let's truly pull the cover off some of these people that installed Barack H. Obama into the White House. Can we do that for a minute? The 15 deadliest corporations. These corporations, if they were individually, if individual human beings, would be locked up for life. Instead, they they continue they continue ranking in the big bucks. Human rights uh, abuses, murder, war, eco disasters, and animal exploitation keep these evil companies ranking in the green. Ranking in the green. Uh, right now, we just want to do a disclaimer um, for the elderly that are watching this. You might want to just excuse yourself. Um, those young people that are watching this, you might want to get a barf bag, all right, so that uh, in case you might throw up, uh, because some of these corporations you support every single day. Number one, and not any in, in any particular order, number one is Chevron. Several big oil companies make this list, but Chevron deserves a special place in hell. Between 1972 and 1993, Chevron, then Texaco, discharged 18 billion gallons of toxic water into the rainforest. Did you hear what I said? 18 billion. That's Chevron. You go get the document and read it for yourself. We don't have time to go in depth into the particular uh, document. Second company, which since chills up my spine because this is one of the reasons why they wanted to shut Professor Griff down. This is one of the reasons I got poisoned. This is one of the reasons I got shot at. This is one of the reasons why I got ejected out of Public Enemy back in the day. Second company is De Beers. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. I think it's not, unless she lives in the Ivory Coast. Blood or conflict diamonds are the name given to minerals purchased from insurgencies in war-torn countries. Prior to 2000, when the UN finally took a standard against practices and the practice of De Beers, De Beers was known uh, was knowingly funding violent guerrilla movements. We have to understand this particular dynamic. Uh, with his diamond purchases in Botswana, De Beers um, has been blamed for clearing of land to be mined for diamonds, all right? Including the forcible removal of indigenous peoples throughout these particular lands. That's company number two. We're not gonna cover them all. Tyson Food Company, shameful uh, animal abuses by Tyson Food Company. Smith & Weston, <laughs> not the rap group Smith & Weston, but the gun company, Smith & Weston. Now let me ask y'all something at this point. Do you own a gun? Do you own a Smith & Weston? So we have to understand who we're supporting, all right, and who we're aligning ourselves with unknowingly. Smith & Weston, at the, large, the largest manufacturer of, of, of handguns, and submachine guns of submachine guns in the U.S. Smith and Wesson is indirectly responsible for uh, for unaccountable shooting deaths. Um, we don't need to mention all of the deaths that. But my thing is, we're not saying shut Smith and Wesson down. We're just saying when the table of accountability is prepared, call Smith and Wesson. You got Smith and Wesson's phone number? No. We're gonna call Smith and Wesson <laughs> to be accountable. All right, but listen because. We can't begin to have the conversation without having Smith & Wesson at the table. And then bring some free guns while you add a Smith & Wesson. I need a new one. <laughs> I'm not waiting for the government to defend me. Philip Morris. Need, need we have that conversation? Philip Morris is the largest manufacturer of cigarettes in the United States. Cigarettes are known to cause cancer in smokers and as well as birth defects in unborn children if the mother smokes while pregnant. Cigarette smoke contains 43 known 
carcinogens, and over 4,000 chemicals. Need we go on? Philip Morris. We talk, wait, we talk about the 15 deadliest corporations. And then we're going to sum it up with how many, of, how many of these corporations are in bed with Barack Obama. Wait, don't get scared and change the channel. <laughs> don't get afraid and, and turn it off and eject the DVD. Don't go to another YouTube station or YouTube channel. Just sit tight. Six, Halliburton. Any corporation that has Dick Cheney as a C CEO uh, has, has got to be evil. All right? That's Halliburton. Coca-Cola, who have admitted recently in, uh, um, in un undocumented, um, undocumented documents, have stated that they're still using cocaine in their formula to make uh, Coca-Cola products. Stop it. Your ass is hooked. As a matter of fact, right now, you're probably sipping a Coke right now. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. Now, don't try to hide it. <laughs> Some of us can't go to a day without uh, having a Coke and a <laughs> smile. Anyway, number eight. Did I say Pfizer was number eight? Let me tell you something. Just the whole pharmaceutical companies, lock, stock, and barrel, the whole barrel of them. We're going to have to invite them when we prepare the table of accountability. Because the amount of drugs, what was the name of that movie that went out about the, uh, the pharmaceutical companies in Africa? The Constant Gardener. Very well, uh, very good movie. Um, which, which talks about the pharmaceutical companies and the fact that when they don't use those particular uh, uh, drugs that are passed by the, federal, the FDA, which are controlled by these people, Monsanto controls the FDA. Monsanto have bent the FDA, the FDA over the desk and doing the FDA. Are you following me? So we can't rely on their regulations to control what goes into the uh, to, to to the system and and to the uh, into the discussion of the, uh, the what goes into the food in America. Those 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 five or six companies that Barack Obama is in bed with. Um, um, the pharmaceutical companies are there at the head of the table. Monsanto's, the World Army, FEMA camps, World Bank, Federal Reserve, those who constructed the Patriot Act, all of them in bed. Nine, Exxon Mobil, and as Michael Tessarian and Jordan Maxwell and Alex Jones and have pointed out, when you talk about the double X, which is uh, very befitting right now because your ass has been double crossed. <laughs> the cross is a Rosicrucian cross. And it's, it's befitting because your ass has been double crossed right now that we mentioned mentioning Exxon Mobil. When you talk about the pipeline that's going to come from Tajikistan and Uzbekistan coming through uh, uh, down into India and other places, you have to recognize the fact that so Big New Brzezinski's talked about this. These multinational corporations are laying this pipeline. You have to look on, look at Exxon uh, Mobil. Caterpillar's a co company. We won't talk about that right now. Ringling Brothers, when it talks about animal abuse. Monsanto's, which was one of my favorites to talk about. As I said a few minutes ago, the FDA is controlled by Monsanto's. When you talk about the Terminator seed and you're talking about using food as a weapon, Monsanto's name has to come up, and we have to call Monsanto's to account uh, for, for all the abuses. We have to bring them to the table of accountability. Just a few more. This one shocked me, because I was a candy bar eating young man when I was growing up. When you talk about Nestle's, and we talk about these companies giving millions and millions of dollars to back not only Barack, but uh, these other candidates because they want to put together an agenda, all right? They're trying to push an agenda. This, these next couple may blow, blow your mind. British Petroleum, BP. You know what BP stands for. Not British Petroleum, but Big Pimpin'. <laughs> the hell can you accidentally dump millions and millions of gallons of oil uh, and throwing off 
uh, the eco balance of the planet, man. Not just America, but the planet. The people in foreign countries are tasting that, that, that oil that, that was spilled. So BP not only stands for British Petroleum, but big pimping. Uh, definitely British Petroleum uh, is on the list. Last but not least, buckle your seatbelt, Dynacorp. When you're talking about selecting a president of the United States of America, Dynacorp is probably at the head. When you do the research on Dynacorp, hell, man, you might as well go to bed. Dynacorp International. This privatized military company is often hired by the United States government to protect American interests overseas so that the government can claim no responsibility for Dynacorp's action. Now, do we need to look at the brutality of Dynacorp International, all right? And we need to hold Dynacorp uh, accountable. Um, and this is critical because I believe it was in the book by, please correct me if I'm wrong, Diary of an Economic Hitman. And it's very critical that who are these companies that go in, um, that go in prior to uh, it hitting the news in America? Who are these companies that go in to destabilize countries and buy off leaders and install leaders and put them in place? Um, working along with the CIA, Dynacorp International. Welcome to the club, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a dirty business. But someone has to tell the story. Let me tell you something. You may not like Alex Jones. You may not like some of the things that Alex Jones puts on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com. You may not like some of the DVDs, Endgame and some of the other DVDs. You may not like some of the information. Hell, you might not even like the way Alex Jones combs his <laughs> hair. But you got to respect the man for the information that he's putting out. Plain and simple because it speaks truth to power. And if you're that kind of coward and that kind of individual that cannot at least say you know something, the man is sticking to what he believes and sticking to the information. All right? We have to respect the fact that the man is, is holding true to speaking truth to power. All right? Let's understand that. 15 deadliest corporations, hidden histories of guns and presidents. Um, not only that, the USA uh, created... Uh, pardon me, Al-Qaeda created uh, by the CIA and corporatism, uh, corporatism, a system of con uh, control designed by the monopoly of men that call themselves um, the global elite. Wake up, America. Stop being sheeple. All right? Stop falling for the machinations and, and that they sell us because it has a cute little tune to it and funny-looking colors with dancing girls or with an with a idiot-ass rapper and a hip-hop song and a rap song attached to it. Stop falling for these, these particular uh, tricks coming from the Obama administration. Um, be well-informed, Americans. Be well-informed individuals. Note, know, and understand, and look at every vi bill and every law that is passed. Because if you don't, you could be, the qui you could be quietly signing on to something and signing something into law that will affect not only you, but your children's children's children. This is Professor Griff. I'm the Minister of Information, Public Enemy. And now that we've been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it's best that we use that platform and use music as a gift that we've been given to speak truth to power. Music is a universal language. And if we don't use this particular platform to speak truth to power, then what good is the <laughs> award? Are you following me? Thank you all very much for listening to me. As I always say, revolution is not an event. It's a process. I'm one of those info warriors. I'm one of those info maniacs. All right? So fine-tuned and raise the vibrational pitch of your thinking, and let's stay in sync with one another. Like minds, like mind. I'm going to say that again. Souls that can uh, spark other souls that are like mine, like mine. Peace, this is Professor Griff. I'm out.